Hi everybody, this is Lisa and it's time again for another Verbling class and in this hour it will be a reading class so I have selected two articles um, from an online a website called the Huffington Post and one of them is about a new type of car that they're coming out with that runs on air and the other article is about uh, nuclear power plants in Japan and um, so if you would like to come and practice reading in English then please uh, stick around for this class and when the join class button becomes available you can click on it to join the class if you have a reservation if you are a Verbling premium member and you have a reservation then you can go ahead and click on that and come into the class right now you can click on the link so that you come in and um, otherwise we will just wait until people join in the class you can also watch the class um, if you are new to Verbling, I will explain how this works. So I am one of the many teachers. We offer classes in English and also in Spanish. And every hour we have classes. Sometimes we have one, two, or even three different classes. And um, you can come and join them at any time. Uh, if you come a little late, you might not be able to get into the Google Hangout to participate in the class, but you can always watch and you can always participate in the Verbling chat box, which is over there. And you can write and ask questions and uh, communicate with people in English. And also, you can always watch the recordings of the classes. Hi there, Paul. How are you? I'm good. Good. Welcome. So I'm just going over while we wait for people to join. I'm just telling people how this, these classes work. And it looks like people have found the green join class button. So if you would like to come into the Google Hangout and practice your reading skills with me and everybody else who joins, then just go ahead and click on the green join class button and that uh, opens up a new window for you that's a Google uh, plus hangout window that it opens and then you will be here down below with us and you will be able to read the article I chose two different articles so hopefully we have time to get through both of them both of them are kind of short shorter articles sometimes I read longer articles but um, these are kind of short articles um, and has everybody seen that I put the link over in the Verbling chat? You can click on that. Okay, it looks like we have eight people, nine people who have opened it, so that's good. So let me say hi to everybody. Arancha, are you there? Arancha? Yes, I'm here. Hi there, how are you doing? Hi. Hi. Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. What about you? I'm doing good. Thanks. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself? Tell us where you're from. I'm from Spain. Mm -hmm. What part of Spain? In uh, the capital, Madrid. Oh, in Madrid. Okay. Great. Wonderful. I am from Spain. Too. You're from Spain too? Wow. Yeah. Two people from Spain. Kind of late in Spain right now, isn't it? Is what? it late? Isn't it late in Spain right now? Is it midnight in Spain? Yes. <laughs> it's yes. twelve four minutes. Yep, a little bit after twelve. Okay, yeah. you guys are you guys are up late. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Yasin, are you there? Yes, teacher, I'm here. Hi. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. And you, teacher? I'm doing well, thank you. <laughs> Okay, looks like we're going to have some more people uh, joining in. Uh, we'll just keep uh, introducing ourselves and then we will uh, get started with the reading. Just want to give everybody a chance to come in. We can have um, up to nine people in the Google Hangouts. And I think we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one more person just joined. 
So we have room for one one more person. If you are out there and you want to read um, in English, then you can join. Okay. All right, Yasin, why don't you tell everybody where you're from? Yes. Okay. Uh, first, hello again. Uh, I'm Yasin from Turkey. Uh, I'm a lecturer in university. Uh, my department is computer programming. Okay. And, uh, nice. Yeah, and that's all. Is that? What is that a picture of you in the picture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you have? What do you have in your hand? Uh, it is melon. Oh, what? Oh, Very looks, delicious melon. Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> Does that grow in Turkey? Yeah, I'm Tur I'm in Turkey. Uh huh. Cool. All right. Well, welcome. Hi, uh, Judith. Hi there. Hi. How do I. Uh, Go ahead Sorry? and introduce yourself. Okay, so I'm Judith and I'm from Hungary. Oh, okay, wonderful. So the time is the same as at San Paul. Uh huh. If I'm not mistaken, he is from Spain. Yes, he said he's from Spain, yeah. Yeah, so the time is the same here. A little bit after midnight already, huh? Yes. Wow, yes. You, you guys are staying up late. It's the, is it because it's the weekend, you can sleep in the morning? <laughs> yes, and Miko's the time difference. Sure. Yeah, we, sure. we must, we must <laughs> stay must up stay late <laughs> to join a class. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Hi, Erika. How are you? Hi. Hi. Why don't you tell everybody where you're from? I'm from Brazil. Brazil, okay, wonderful. It's not so late in Brazil. <laughs> yeah, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Jabber, are you there? Hi. Hi Hello. there. Yes, hi. Why don't uh, you uh, tell everybody where you're from? Yeah, I'm from Algeria. Okay, great. And yes. Davison. Davison? How do I say your name? Is it Davilson? My name is Davilson. 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 Okay. Davilson. <laughs> Davil. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Are you from Brazil? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do you, do you if know? Do I know Brazil? Yes. I am uh, from Brazil. Yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting, uh, nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you. Yes, I, I have lots of students <laughs> that come from Brazil. <laughs> yes. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Avni, how are you? I am fine, thank you. How about you, teacher? I'm doing well, thank you. And where are you calling in from? Yes, uh, I am calling from Turkey. Turkey, and, all right. Yes. Cool. I am, yes, I am working. I am not a student. Oh, okay. You, yes, you look like a, a businessman in your picture. Mm. Yes, <laughs> I am working in a bank. <laughs> oh, okay. Good. <laughs> okay, you, and Arancha, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself to people. Uh, hi, I'm Arancha from Spain, in particular Madrid, the capital. Okay, wonderful. And Abdullah. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Can't cool. complain. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> you have Have you enjoyed your day? Um, actually, I I have enjoyed my day. Yeah, I was. Okay. Yeah, I was on Wobbling. Uh huh. You know, yeah, I didn't want to go out I mean, because it's freezing cold. Oh. Yeah, it's so cold. I mean, yesterday it was we had a very uh, nice weather. Mm -hmm. It was warm and sunny, and today it was just cold, and mm. I didn't, I wasn't in my mood to go out. So I just went, to, I just do the shopping, and uh, that that was. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. So tell everybody uh, where you where you live. Uh, I live in Germany. Okay, 
So in Germany, you're getting some um, spring, but not quite yet. Uh, well, <laughs> no, no, everybody is uh, talking about the global warming, but uh, you can't see it here in <laughs> Germany <laughs> or in Europe. Yeah. You you want you would like to have some global warming right now? <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah. we are in spring. I mean, come on, we are in spring, but it, I feel me like in winter right now. Yeah. How cold is it? Um, it's it was nine. It's nine degrees right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it is. I um. My name is Lisa. For everybody who came in, um, and I live in Washington State in the United States, and the weather has kind of been the same as Abdullah is saying in Germany. We've had uh, some sunny days, and it was kind of hot and warm, and then it was raining, so and cold again. So. We'll see how it is this weekend. I think it's supposed to rain. So, Okay, everybody, this is the reading class, and this is going to give you a chance to practice reading out loud. Um, in the reading class, we do it a, a, diff a little bit um, different than just reading. This is how it works. I'm going to uh, share the articles on a Google document in the screen here, so everybody can either open up the Google document if you want to have it on your own computer or you can look at it on my computer uh, I mean my screen <laughs> hold on it's some kind of lagging right now okay okay um, so there you there it is we have we're gonna read two articles the first article is called the Puget Peugeot actually Peugeot car that runs on air will be available in 2016, company says. Okay, so the way we do it is I'm going to read first. So I will highlight like this, and I will read out loud so you can listen to me pronounce the words and um, how my tone is and how I say everything. And then you will be able to read next. Okay, so we're going to do it um, just taking turns, one person at a time. And if you do not understand a word and you want me to explain something, then go ahead and um, make sure your microphone is turned on and then you can say your, ask your question. Okay? Let's see. I think we have some people who left and some new people came in. So, Khan, you're came in, you just came in. Hi there, Khan. Hi. Hi. Where are you from? Uh, from Turkey. Okay, great. Lots, lots of people from Turkey and from Spain. <laughs> And Jose, hi there, Jose. Hello. Hi, where are you from? I'm from Spain. Spain, wow. Three people from Spain. Where? Three people. He's from Spain. I think we lost Arantia, though. So. Hello, Bob. <laughs> okay, well, welcome. Okay, did everybody open up the link? I'll put it in the Verbling chat one more time, and I'll also put it in the Google chat. Sometimes the Verbling chat. Um, people have problems with it. So there it is, and it looks like we have lots of people watching, and they're ready to listen to us read, probably. Okay. Yes. If you um, if we have any background noises, somebody might mute you. That's just because they're hearing noise, and you can tell who the noise is from if you see, like right now, I'm talking, and you see a green line under my uh, box there that's how you know that uh, there's some noise so sometimes if we hear some noise we might start muting people but if it's your turn to read make sure you unmute yourself by clicking on the um, microphone that's above the verbling chat box if your microphone is red then we will not be able to hear you so you have to make sure it is gray okay all right, so uh, here we go. I'm going to read first, and then Yasin, I'll, I'll call on you to read the same thing that I read after I read it. Okay? Navi, okay. All right, so somebody have a question? Nope. No, no. Okay, all right. Peugeot car that runs on air will be available in 2016, company says promising to drastically reduce CO2 emissions and the money spent on gas, Peugeot unveiled its hybrid air. The company said it should hit the market in 2016. 
Okay, Yasin, you want to read that again? Okay. Thanks. Okay, teacher. One minute, please. Peugeot car that runs on air will be available in 2016, company says. Promising to directly reduce CO2 emissions and money spent on gas. Peugeot unveiled its hybrid air. The company said it should hit the market in 2016. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just I want... Think... What? Hold on. Drast drastically. Drastically, yes. Okay, so drastically. promising. So they're basically saying that this car will reduce CO2, CO2 emissions, so the stuff that comes out of cars that's toxic to the environment, drastically. So that means... Um, a lot. <laughs> they're basically by they're going to re, um, lower, reduce, lower the emissions by a lot. So drastically okay. means a lot, and and also the money spent on gas. So this car will not need a lot of gas. And then the second part unveiled. So Peugeot, the car company, unveiled its hybrid air. So unveiled means to uncover or uh, to to show. So they showed it for the first time mm -hmm. um, to the to the public. All right, um, and they're saying that this car is going to be ready for the market, which means you can buy it in 2016. Okay, we breathe it. Why not drive it? Peugeot Citroen this week introduced a car that runs on. Air. The car manufacturer said the vehicle should be available by 2016. All right. Go ahead, uh, Paul. Paul? Yeah. We read it. Why not write it? Write it. Mm -hmm. Peugeot Citroën this week, this week introduced a car that runs on the air. The car manufacturer said the, 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 the vehicle, the vehicle, Vehicle, yeah. Vehicle should be available by 2016. Mm -hmm. So the car manufacturer, so the people who make the car, said the vehicle should be available. So that's meant it's going to be ready and for sale, available. When something is available, it means it's um, something that you can buy. Okay. We are quite confident, company spokesman John Baptiste Thomas, Thomas told the Huffington Post on Wednesday. Thomas said the company already had developed four of its hybrid air prototypes and driven them 12,000 miles. Okay, Khan? Um, we are quite confident, company spokesman John Baptiste Thomas told the Huffington Post on Wednesday. Thomas said the company already had developed four of its hybrid uh, air prototypes and driven them 12,000 miles. Mm -hmm. So does everybody uh, know what the word prototype means? Yes, I think this what is the only mean? word, the first one. What is it? Oh yes, so it means uh, there, the basic there, uh, example. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. That's a good word, like examples. So they're the ones that they're testing. When you make a prototype, they're t they use them when they're developing. So when they're developing yes. a product, yes, you make a prototype. So it's not the final product yet. It's the one they use and test, okay? Yes. Uh -huh. Do you guys know what hybrid means? Yes. Hybrid? Yes, yeah, I know it. Tell me, what does it mean? Uh, it's the combination with gas and electric. Yes, or in this case, hybrid would, might mean gas and air, for example. Yes, in this case, right. I'm sorry, yeah, yes. Right. Uh -huh. And, okay, so the company has already developed four, and they've already driven it 12,000 miles. So they're testing it out. It looks like it's promising, and they will be able to uh, develop it and have it available by 2016. The outward design of the car won't change much since the technology can be fitted to current models, but under the body, the advances will be a first, Thomas said. A, a hydraulic pump forces compressed air against fluid that activates the wheels. The pressure can regenerate within 10 seconds if a motorist were to stop. 
Okay, you did. Okay. <clears throat> The outward design of the car won't change much since the technology can be fitted to current models. But under the body, the advances will be a first, Thomas said. A hydraulic pump forces compressed air against fluid that activates the wheels. The pressure can regenerate within 10 seconds if a motorist were to stop. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean, the outward design? outside uh-huh like yes. yes the outside of it or we call it the body the body of the car mm -hmm. yeah the body so that won't really change but the inside where the motor and all the stuff is is um, because they can put all of the stuff in the current model and let's see any other words it might be hydraulic pump so this is kind of a more of the engineering description of what it actually happens so there's a pump in there and it pushes or forces Mm -hmm. Air, which is pushed together, compressed air, against fluid, and that activates the wheels. That starts the wheels going. So that's how it's going to uh, run the car. The pressure can generate, uh, regenerate, sorry, the pressure can regenerate within 10 seconds if a motor is to stop. All right, we already read that. Okay. The hybrid air would enable a motorist to drive up to 50 minutes in city conditions without using any gas, Thomas told Huff, Huff Post or Huffington Post. In what industry observers hope will be a breath of fresh air for the environment, the air-only mode converts the car into a ZEV, a zero emission vehicle, the company said in a press release. Okay, Jose, do you want to read? What I have to read the hybrid. Mm -hmm, the hybrid air. The hybrid air will enable a motorist to drive up to 15 minutes in city condition without using any gas. Some of In what industry? Uh, observe how will be a uh, breath of fresh air for the environment. The air only mode converts the car into a set. Uh, zero emission by the company said in a press wheel. Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. You're, it was a little bit hard to hear because your microphone was coming in and out. But yeah. so, how, how long can this car go without any gas? How, how many minutes can it go for? 50 minutes. Yeah, 50 minutes without using any gas. Without using any gas. Right, and um, and what else is so wonderful about it? What kind of uh, thing can you do that's special in the second paragraph there? Zero emission. Yeah. Zero em Go. emission vehicle. Yeah, so you can switch it to air only mode. So you're just running on air, no gas at all, which means that nothing toxic is going to come out of the car. No smoke or emissions or anything. Uh, that would be toxic because it's just uh, air coming, being used. So no emissions. So that's pretty. That's a pretty good uh, tech, new technology improvement in technology. MSN uh, noted that by 2020, the company expects its hybrid airline to get 117 miles per gallon. As in gas electric hybrids, sensors in the air-powered vehicle automatically select the power source best suited to the conditions. Okay, Erika, you want to read that? It, your microphone might be muted, Erika. Okay, there you go. MSN, MSN, MSN <laughs> noted that by 2020 the company expect, expected its hybrid airline to get 100 70 miles per gallon, as in gas, electric, electric hybrid sensors, and the air powered by automatically selected the power source that's suited to the conditions. Mm -hmm. So they already are expecting that they will improve the technology because um, 
by 2020, it'll get even more miles per gallon, twice as many. And um, does everybody understand this part here where they're talking about the sensors, as in gas electric hybrid sensors in the air powered vehicle automatically select the power source? Does, do you guys know what sensors are? Anybody? So right now with the hybrid cars, you can they either run on electricity or gas, and they have these things inside of the car that can um, feel. <laughs> they don't feel like we do with hands, but they can sense. That's what it's called to sense something, and they're called sensors, and they can tell whether or not the car needs to be running on gas or if it can switch to electricity and that's going to be the same thing with these cars that the the actual car is going to be able to tell whether or not you need to uh, use air or gas it will select the power source so the power source will either be air or gas and it'll be best suited so best suited means whatever is the most uh, appropriate uh, power source for the whatever the time period is so maybe if it's better to run on gas it'll know that the car will know <clears> it and if it can run on uh, air so for example now in a, an electric car maybe it will be able to tell if the the battery is running low and you shouldn't run on any electricity because you need gas to work so it just depends on the conditions so when when it's needed which one is best okay this last paragraph here says while Peugeot may be the first major auto manufacturer to develop an air-powered vehicle on four wheels, a UK company unveiled the three-wheeled air-fueled AirPod in 2010, employing compressed air locomotion. The $10,000 car is able to reach 50 miles per hour and is steered with a joystick. Okay. Uh, Davi, you want to read? Um, while Peugeot may be the first m major auto, auto manufacturers to develop an air power added um, my God. vehicle vehicle and for <laughs> what? wheels wheels uh, for wheels I you Key company on the three wireless air Ford iPod in 2010, employing composite years information in the 10 million cars in the able to 10,000. Yeah, 10,000. Um, car cars is able to reach um, 15 50? mph 15 mm -hmm. uh, mph is studying with your joystick with a joystick uh -huh. good yeah so while it's the first major auto so major just means big one of the big auto makers uh, there's a few of them in the world, you know, like Toyota and uh, other ones. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they're they're one of the major. Peugeot is a major one. Um, but the, they're just saying here that another uh, company in the United Kingdom, United Kingdom, UK, uh, has also showed that they have a three-wheeled air-fueled car named AirPod, and that's been out already since 2010. And it only costs ten thousand dollars, which is not very not very expensive. Um, and you drive it with a joystick. So joysticks are usually something that you know from video games, older video games, where it's like yes. you have a little stick, yeah, and you just move it around. Mm -hmm. So um, and right here, this locomotion that just means um, it uses compressed air. Locomotion means to go forward motion. They used to call uh, trains locomotors, for example. So I'm wondering if anybody uh, has heard of air cars before. Has anybody ever heard of these? This? Yes. Yeah. What have you heard about it, Avi? 
Ev cars. Yeah. Uh, uh, some universities in Turkey uh, uh -huh. talking about nowadays, uh, especially air cars and uh -huh. air uh, train. <laughs> Oh really? Oh. Yes. Awesome. Uh, yes. Especially the, the Black Sea Technical University in Turkey. Uh huh. Uh, last week, uh, uh, professor, I don't know his name, uh, talk uh, uh, talk about uh, talked about that idea, but it's very. Uh, fascinating, but n now I think it's not uh, it's not possible, in my opinion. Maybe five years later, at least. Mm-hmm. What? No, not. For, you mean in Turkey? Yes, in Turkey, the oh, okay. University. Uh -huh. <coughs> okay. Mm -hmm. it yeah. Names. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. In Turkey, right now, do they use other types of hybrid? Uh, vehicles, cars, or trucks, or anything? Yes, ca uh, I think in uh, uh, Toyota, uh, mm. but in Turkey uh, factory, yeah. uh, I think uh, 300 cars product manufacture. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm, yes, uh -huh. he hybrid, hybrid yeah. uh, cars. And uh, use it. In Hungary, uh, do people use uh, hybrid cars much? No, no. I've never <laughs> seen like that. No, <laughs> maybe some rich people, but I, I, I've never seen a car like that in Hungary. Yeah, yes, I think um, they're kind of expensive too in the United States. Uh, actually, quite a few people use them in the cities and stuff. Like I live near the city of Seattle. And lots of people have what we call a Toyota, it's a Toyota Prius. It's a hybrid electric uh, electric car. So that's a pretty popular one. What about anybody else? Does anybody else know about hybrid cars, either electric or otherwise? Jose, are there any in Spain? Yeah, here in Spain people are starting to use hybrids, but not with a, yeah. uh, with electricity. Uh huh. Also, I have one. Of, my mother has one. Oh yeah. <laughs> your mother wants one, or she bought one. What? Did your mother buy one, or she wants to buy one? No, she 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 bought one. Oh, what kind? Uh, like Lexus hybrid. Oh, okay, nice. Okay, great. Okay, uh, Amanda and Ahmed, hi there. Welcome, you guys. We were just reading an article about new car technology. Come, they're going to be coming out with uh, cars that run on air, which will be good for the environment. So now we're going to talk about nuclear power. In this article, it's uh, Fukushima. Probably everybody's familiar with uh, Fukushima and the power plant that got affected during the tsunami that happened last year and how it got damaged and stuff and so this little article is just a news article that is talking about what is going on there now it's called uh, Fukushima cooling system fails for a second time in a month Tokyo power was restored Friday to a cooling system at a tsunami damaged nuclear plant in Japan that failed for the second time in a month after an outage caused by construction work to keep out rats suspected of setting off the earlier blackout. Okay, An Avni? Yes. Uh, Fukushima cooling system fails for second time in a month. Tokyo. Power was restor restored Friday, Friday to a cooling system at a tsunami-damaged nuclear plant in, a, in Japan that failed for the second time in a month after an outage caused by caused by construction work to keep out rats suspected of setting off the earlier blackout. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's make sure everybody understands this. So in nuclear power plants, they have a cooling system which brings in cold oops, 
cold water and helps to mm -hmm. cool down the reactors and things. And when something fails, it means it's not working. So that's one of the yes. problems that they've been having lose. is that, yeah. Lost. It, right. They lose it. It doesn't work lose. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what's happening. Um, and the reason why that's happening is um, because it, they said it failed for the second time. So it already happened once after an outage. So when they say outage. outage, they're talking about actually about a power outage, which means the electricity went out. So they didn't have any electricity to keep it running. And this, they think, was caused by... Uh, construction work that they were doing so they were building on the power plant um, because they were trying to keep out rats <laughs> so they were having problems with rats so they were trying to fix probably the areas where the rats had come in because they were suspected that means you think that somebody did it they thought that the rats um, probably rats sometimes rats chew through electrical wiring and stuff and they cause blackout. So a blackout is when all the power goes off. So if you have a blackout in your house, that means your lights cannot be turned on because the electricity is mm. off. So <laughs> there's that's kind of amazing. There's rats over there trying to eat through probably. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now they have to deal, deal with the rats, right? Yeah. Yeah, really. I guess the, the rats aren't afraid of nuclear power. <laughs> the radiation. <Yeah. laughs> okay, power for the cooling system for a storage pool for fuel was restored after a two-hour break at reactor number three, and there was no immediate danger from the breakdown, according to Tokyo Electric Power Company, the utility that operates Fukushima, Fukushima Daiichi in northeastern Japan. Okay, Amanda, you want to read that? Yes. Great. Power for the cooling system for a storage pool for full was restored after a two hour break at Richter No. 3. And there was no immediate danger from, from the Breaking down according to Tokyo Electric Power Co. The utility that op operates Fuk Fukushima Daiichi in Northern Japan. Okay, good. So there's this cooling system. So they are talking about the power for that. So they like the electricity that they need to keep it working um, for the cooling system for a storage pool for fuel. So this is just part of how the nuclear power plants work. They have to store fuel, and they call them pools, where they store them. And it was out um, for a while, but it was only about two hours, and then it came back on. So restored means power came back on, and so they could run it again. It was working again. And they say there was no immediate danger. That means there was no danger right then, right at that moment. Um, there was nothing that they needed to be prepared to take care of because no nothing was going to happen because of the power outage, they say. So the breakdown is the breakdown of the power. And so the word according just means this is what these guys said. So according to, that means they said this, that there was no problem. And it's the utility company. So the utilities are things like water, gas, and electricity. Those are known as utilities and they're utility companies that uh, that service people in their homes or in their businesses with those types of things like electricity, gas, and uh, water and things. Okay? So... I got a question. Yes, please. What's uh, the question? When, 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 you, when you are asking a uh, text question, uh -huh. you have to start with according to the text or is it necessary? Um, well, in this is a news article and so yes, a lot of times when you, even when you're speaking or when you're re, um, writing a news article or something, if somebody else said it, so this is like really what somebody else said, 
you would say according to them because it's not according to you because you don't really have that information. So for example, if I, um, I went and I read something about a product, like maybe let's talk about the car. So according to Peugeot, this car can go 50 something miles per hour or something like that. Um, according to, that means they said it because I don't really know. So it's whenever you're reporting about something that anybody else said. Does that make sense? Yeah. So Jose, if you told me a story and you told me uh, that your mom bought a car and she loves it and it costs this much money, then I could say, I could say, well, Jose told me that his mom, or I could say, well, according to Jose, his yeah. mom, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lisa, right. can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, 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 CEO means yes. corporation or company? Company. Power company or corporation. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Corporation. Um, usually, if it's corporation, it's that's uh, so oh. like it like Pepsi Cola. I think Pepsi Cola. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that, and that means incorporated. Incorporated, yeah. Yeah, and that means corporation. <laughs> thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> sure, yeah, no problem. Um, and then I just wanted, I wrote it in the chat. This is, that's the abbreviation for number. So reactor number three. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so work to put up nets to keep out rats and other animals at Fukushima Daiichi plant in northeastern Japan inadvertently caused the power outage. TEPCO spokesman Akitsuka Kobayashi said, details were not clear and the outage was still under investigation. Okay, Ahmed? Check on your microphone, ah Ahmed, because I don't hear you. Me is a me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I did. Aka, are you there? Okay, Yasin, why don't we go with you? Okay, he was having connection problems, probably. Yasin, okay. you want to read that work to put up nets? Okay, teacher. Okay. Pep great. Incorporated work to put up nets to keep out rats and <clears throat> other animals, Fukush animals at Fukushima Daiichi plant in northwestern. Ja Japan inadvertently mm -hmm. caused the power outage. Outage. TEPCO spokesman uh, Akutsuka Kobayashi said details were not clear and the out outage was still under investigation. Mm -hmm. So, according to this guy right here, the spokesman, so he's the person who speaks for the company, TEPCO. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is the Tokyo Electric Power Company. Um, he says that the reason why the power went out was because they were putting up nets, nets to keep out, so to make sure that the rats and other animals cannot get in. They're mm -hmm. trying to keep them out. Um, and he said that it inadvertently, so when you use the word in, advertently it means like accidentally accidentally yes yeah so it's something that happened you didn't mean for it to happen but it just kind of happened as a result of something else but it, it wasn't on purpose they weren't trying to cause that problem but May I yes ask, go ahead. sorry so yeah, is ahead. this word used by everyday people um, I mean, in everyday language or is it it's more formal. Science. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's more formal. And not necessarily just science, but in writing. It's probably used more in writing. And also, if you were, um, you know, a person, maybe like a professor or some, you know, pretty, mm -hmm. you know, people who educated. use. Yeah, educated people, yes. It, high, more highly educated people, when they're telling a story, they might say, I was doing such and such, and this happened inadvertently, you know, but a, yeah, a younger person would not use that word, for example, mm -hmm. <laughs> like a kid, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah, but it's fairly common, mm -hmm. and um, so details were not clear, so they don't know exactly, 
the details would be like more exactly what happened like uh, they would be able to tell us more information but there weren't it wasn't really clear so they were still doing an investigation they were still trying to figure out exactly what happened because as you can imagine that's kind of scary for them because if the cooling systems break down then that's a safety problem it does. yes so they need to know why this stuff is happening and they think it's because of the work they were doing but you know they don't know for sure so they have to keep checking it out they say here um, a dead rat found near a switchboard was suspected of the power outage last month that led to a cooling system not working for two days at the plant. Okay, Ahmed, did you get your microphone to work? It might be muted. Hello? <laughs> no? Okay. Hi there. Yeah? Uh -huh. Hello, everybody here? Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> We're just reading about the uh, nuclear power okay. plant in, in Japan. Uh, that rate found, but it, I threw it not here a little bit. You want to read uh, that right there? Yeah, please can you zoom in for a little? Okay, I can make it bigger. How's that? Yeah, that's great. Where did he speak? Where did he speak? Where, Dia? Where are you? Where are you from, Dia? Tell. Dan yes, I'm from uh, Egypt, Cairo. Egypt. Okay, a dead rate found the nearest wedge board was suspected. Suspected? Yes, no. that's right. Suspected. It disappeared. It disappeared. Yeah. Was suspected of the power out outage last month that led to a cooling system not working for two days at the plant. Okay. Yes, so the switchboard the meaning, yeah, the the meaning of outage. outage. Okay. Outage means the power went out. There's no electricity. Switchboard. Yeah. Switchboard is where they run the um, where they run everything, where there's lots of buttons and little things where they have to move around. So the switchboard is the where the controls are. So they found a dead rat near the controllers or the switchboard, and they think they suspect uh, that that was what caused uh, the problem last month. So. Um, but they don't really know. But they, but it was a problem because it didn't work for two days. So um, that's not not a good thing. Okay, wh where were we? You did, did you read again or no? Me again? Read again? No, the yeah, we're on. Uh, I think Judith is next. Okay. <laughs> okay. Nuclear uh, nuclear regulation authority spokesman Takahiro Sakuma said an alarm went off in the afternoon about the latest problem at reactor number three. Okay, you did. Okay. Nuclear Regulation Authority spokesman Takahiro Sakuma said an alarm went off in the afternoon about the latest problem at reactor number three. Mm -hmm. Okay, the cooling system. What? Did somebody have a question? Nope. Okay, the cooling system can be turned off for two weeks before temperatures approach dangerous levels at the spent fuel storage pools. But if the water runs dry, the fuel rods, even spent ones, will spew enormous levels of radiation. Okay. Jose? Uh, the cooling system systems can be turned off for two weeks before temperatures approach. Levels just for so, I don't it's hard for yeah. Your microphone is kind of I don't know. It doesn't work very well. <laughs> it's hard. It's going in and out. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. It just kind of. It's uh. I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. But if the water runs dry, the full rod even spin one oh, yeah. while the spew enormous levels of radiation. Radiation. Yeah. So basically, they're just saying that even though the cooling system, so the 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 pools and the water and everything that cool down the the fuel that's been spent, 
even though it can be turned off for two weeks before it gets too hot, you know, before the temperatures approach, that means to where they get to dangerous levels at the spent fuel storage pool. So that's another term there for the nuclear power plant where they, where the stuff that happens after they make the energy is. Um, but the problem is, is that if they, if the water runs dry, so there's no water there, then we can get lots of radiation coming off. So that's the problem. Spewing means um, throwing out or sending out. So spewing would be like radiation is flying in the air kind of thing. That's what that means. The plant went into multiple meltdowns after the March 2011 tsunami damaged backup generators and all cooling systems failed, including those for the reactors. The plant is being decommissioned but continues to have glitches. Okay, let's see. David? The plants went into multiple metal, made it all. Meltdown. And they mesh. Okay. Mm. Maple. Maple. Yeah. Mm. 2011. Okay. Living. Yeah. Oh my god. The tsunami damaged the backup generators and all calling systems for this. Including to for the Richter's Richter's. Yep. The prince is Bay. The community. Oh my God! The, but continues to have. Yeah. Glitches. Okay, I'll go the, over. It. Glitches. That word is called glitches. But continues to have. Glitches. 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 Uh huh. Thanks so much. Yeah. The plant went into multiple meltdowns. So it had several or many meltdowns. You guys probably heard about that in the news um, in your own language. Um, so that's when it's, you know, melting down means it's, uh, <laughs> it's not do doing very well. <laughs> Not supposed yes. to be what it's doing, and it's it's meaning that the radiation is coming out. Um, so that happened actually not last year, but the year before. So it's now it's two years ago already that that happened, and they were damaged because of the tsunami, and even the backup generator. So the backup means in case something, in case the power goes out, they have generators that make power. So um, that's lots of like hospitals and other. Important places have generators, backup generators, in case they lose electricity. And the uh, generators... Alternative, uh, uh, alter can we say alternative generators? Um, alternative. Next resource. Alternative. alternative. Usually, I, yeah, you could, you would understand it, but the more common term is backup. Oh, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, because it's backing up. It's, it's, it's not just mm -hmm. an alternative. It's there only to use when the, the other power goes out. So it's a backup. So okay. um, yeah, just like if you have like a backup plan, something if your first plan fails, you have a backup plan. Yeah, B, yeah. B plan is yes. alternative. Yes. If right. you, if you, yes. if we fail, we can use another plan. Yes. We can understand. Yeah. Okay. Got exactly. It. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, and so at that time, all of the cooling systems failed, including those for the reactors. They say that the plant is being decommissioned, so it's not going to be used. Um, anymore, yeah. but that they're still having problems with it. So even if it's decommissioned, that means they're not using it to cr produce Just electricity. More. There's still there's still fuel there. There's still radiation that could leak out, and they still have to watch it. They can't just let it leave it. They can't just walk away <laughs> with it and say we're done with it. They have to take care of it. Um, and glitches. Um, you probably heard that word too if you play computer games or use computer programs, it means when there's a problem. Um, when there's something going on and it's not supposed to work that way, it's a problem and so it's a, called a glitch. Yeah, so... Error. Like, yeah, like an error or something <laughs> that's happening and there's a glitch in the, in the program. Like in computer language, uh, 
Anvi, you, you or Avni, you said that uh, you work. No, no. Who was it? Yasin, you work in computer programming. Yasin. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, are you familiar with that word glitches? Because they use that a lot in computer programming when you create a program and if it has some kind of errors that that's called a glitch. When it has a glitch, you have to fix the code or something. I don't okay. know glitch uh, Lisa, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there you can learn it's a new word for you. <laughs> errors or some kind of problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fears, fears are growing about the safety of nuclear plants, and people have periodically staged street protests. Street protests that, that are rare in Japan. They're rare in Japan. Okay, Avni? Very short <laughs> for me. Yes, yeah, okay. you can do next one if you want to. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, okay. Fears are growing about the safety of nu nuclear plants, and people have periodic, periodically state street protests that are rare in Japan. Only two of the nation's 50 working power plants are up, and the government is running beef it, beef, uh, beef it up safety checks on the plants, including security secretizing quake faults right below or near the plants. Right. So there's a lot of fear. People are afraid. They're um, about the safety, afraid. so they're worried. Yeah. And people have periodically, and that word periodically means sometimes. So they have sometimes. Um, staged means they've done or uh, uh, participated in street protests which are yes. rare in Japan. So rare means they don't happen very often. It's very um, only now and then if it's serious. So people seldom. in Japan are rare. now... Yes, rare means seldom. seldom. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's a good word for it. And it says only two of the nation's 50 working power plants are up. That means they're not. a lot of them are not working. And the government is running beefed up. So that means um, stronger or more um, stringent. They're beefing up security. When you beef up their safety checks, they're meaning they're doing more. They're trying to make things safer by having more checks, more tests on the plants. And they're also scrutinizing, which means that they're they're um, they're like looking at in detail the quake faults. So the quake, the faults underneath the ground that could cause, when the earthquakes happen, they can move. So they're looking at uh, that too to see how they might affect the power plants that are um, near the faults. So you got to be careful there. All right, last paragraph says, Shinzu Abe, who became prime minister about three months ago, has expressed a desire to restart nuclear plants. Japan lacks natural resources and relied on nuclear energy for about a third of its electricity needs prior to March 2011. Energy imports have soared over the last two years, putting a strain on the economy. Okay, let's see who wants to read. Yasin, you want to read that last one? Okay, teacher Lisa. Mm-hmm. Shanzo Abe, who, who became Prime Minister about three months ago, has expressed a desire to start nuclear plants. Uh, Job Japan lacks natural resources and relied on nuclear energy for about a third of its electricity needs period to March uh, 2011. Energy imports have soared over the last two years putting uh, a strain on the economy. Mm -hmm. So this guy here, Shinzu, he became the Prime Minister and he has expressed, so that means he has said that he has a desire, that he wants to restart the nuclear power plant. So he, he knows that it is very difficult for Japan to create enough energy, enough of their own electricity, because they don't have, they, they lack, they don't have um, a lot of natural resources like maybe coal and other things um, that they can use to create energy. 
So they have been relying on nuclear energy for a lot of their electricity before the tsunami. Um, and since the tsunami, since they closed down or they stopped using a lot of the nuclear power plants, they had to import energy. So the energy imports have soared. That means they've gone, gone uh, very high. So they had to import a lot. And that costs a lot of money, and that is hurting the economy. It's putting a strain. So to put a strain on something means to um, harm it or hurt it. And so it's very hard for the Japanese economy to pay for all of those energy imports. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? All of those energy imports. No? Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for coming to class and doing the reading. Those were, um, they were not thanks, easy, but yes. they were good for you guys. I think you were able to understand them and uh, mm -hmm. maybe learn a few words. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah. Okay. Thanks good. for your helping, yes, Lisa. Yes, you're very welcome. Okay, you guys. I'm going to be doing you, a speaking you, class next. So bye, if you bye. want to talk, you can come to that one. Okay? I'll see you guys. Bye for now. Bye for now.